Okay, good morning. My name is Jim Stevens. I work in the controls group. Uh, welcome day three of EPIC's training. Uh, today I'm going to talk about CAQDM. And uh, before I started, I wanted to uh, say that Ken Evans originally put the slide presentation together, and then later Tim Mooney uh, created an abridged version. So I just want to give him credit for the outline. And uh, you know, this, this is very similar to if people were, were, who were here for the MEDM talk I gave a couple weeks ago. Uh, a lot of similarities in the slides. Um, so uh, let's, uh, let's begin. Okay, CAQTM. It stands for Channel Access Cute Display Manager. It's a graphical interface for creating control screens. And it's very similar to MEDM. Matter of fact, it's based on MEDM. Uh, and it uses uh, Qt, which is uh, a cross-platform application framework. That's a, it's a widget toolkit that was also expanded to run non graphical user interface programs. Runs on Linux, runs on Windows. It's uh, distributed with an open source license, so it's free. We like free. Uh, the look and feel is similar to MEDM, and uh, it has an MEDM file converter that you can uh, take your legacy files, ADL files, Convert it to the new format. And uh, so this is the primary tool that we use to display and uh, monitor devices for the control system. Okay, here's a display that I took from the Swiss light source. And it uh, looks very similar to what we're uh, familiar with here at APS with MEM displays. And so we've got uh, text readbacks. Um, there's a strip chart here. Looks like we have a couple of plots. Um, I looked up uh, geschlossen. That means uh, closed in German. So from <laughs> the light source, uh, Swiss, li Swiss light source. So this is, uh, looks very similar in look and feel and functionality. So people here for the MEDM uh, tutorial that I gave uh, this slide is uh, an exact replica. And here what I did was I took a booster synchrotron main display, put it through the file converter, and this is what I got. This is the uh, CAQDM UI formatted file. And the file extension, I think it means user interface. And so we see we're dominated here by uh, the blue uh, related display buttons, which launch related displays. For example, here we have the booster RF ramp control display. And like I said, I put them through the file converter. They came right through, made a few adjustments on uh, the text, but the functionality is right there. Here I uh, pull up a display I created for the Beamline uh, PSS system. This is uh, not in execute mode. This is just an edit mode. So for Beamline people, uh, would we'll be familiar with this, a beam line um, with uh, three stations. And uh, here, uh, this is for entering and exiting uh, the uh, stations safely, used to monitor that. So we have examples of uh, crash buttons, search buttons, um, the doors, find out what the status of the doors are. And again, I put this through the converter, and it came through, made a few adjustments, and there we go. So a little background on CAQDM. It was released in February of 2012. They had been working on it for two years, and uh, they, they released it to the EPICS community. They had been using MEDM for many, many years at uh, the Swiss light source, and Anton Mesger is the person who wrote CAQDM. And uh, he had these uh, 
points in a presentation for why he decided to create this display manager. And so Anton said, Motif and X11 were becoming dated. The library's becoming dated. They were difficult to add new features to them. Um, they had used Qt Qt at the Swiss Light Source. They were familiar with it. They'd run, created other applications with it. So it's something they thought would be a good you know, toolkit to adapt to uh, this display manager. They wanted, since they had been using MEDM for so many years, they wanted to incorporate all the existing widgets that they had created into this new display manager. So they had a, uh, they created a, a conversion tool to create the MEDM ADL file format into an XML-based XML UI format. And so there are two parts. There's two parts to uh, creating the displays and then running the displays. So there are two separate items. There's Qt Designer, which comes packaged with Qt. Um, so that's the tool that you'll use for creating the displays. Then there is the viewer, CAQTM, which is the executable that Anton wrote. Okay, so I thought uh, just step through the steps that I follow to uh, run to uh, create the displays and run the displays. So the first thing I do is set the environment variables, and uh, we loaded Qt on a machine on the accelerator. And so the first thing I do is I set the environment variable for CAQTM display path. And this is used to pick up where your files are going to be, and also it uh, points to uh, a style sheet, and I'll talk about style sheets in a little bit. There's a Qt plugin path that you have to set, and that's to pick up the binaries for Anton's widgets that he created for CAQTM. Also, you have to set FXCA max array bytes. Normally, this is taken care of for you. You don't really need to worry about this. Um, this is just uh, the uh, um, defining the capacity of transferring data from the server to the client. And you just don't want the client to have a smaller level for the array bytes. OK, the last point here is for people on the beam lines. If you want to use CAQTM, just go to APS Share. There's a directory there. We have a how-to, and there are shell scripts. There are the executables. Tim Mooney built it and maintains it. So my experience is with the accelerator, and people on the beam lines look the APS Share. So there are three steps to follow to create the displays, edit the displays, execute the displays. And the easiest way to go is to just take an MEDM legacy display. It can be a very simple display. Um, for example, you could just launch MEDM, create a new display, save it. There you go. Ready to go. Run it through the file converter. That is ATL to UI name of the file, and you'll get a comparable UI file. Okay, after you've created the UI file, you run the designer, which is the display editor, on the UI file and make changes, additions, whatever you want to do, create your display. And so we're going to talk about the designer here. Then the third step, once you've edited it, Edit to the display, execute it with CAQDM. Okay, so here's an example of what the designer looks like. And there are three parts of it. There's the object inspector, the property editor, and the widget box. You notice they're all blank here because we haven't opened the display yet. So this is probably what you're going to see when you first 
run it. So the first step you do will be open. Open the UI display. And here it is. Here's a simple display I created, new display.ui. Nothing in it. And now the object ex uh, inspector, um, the, the, the main window is highlighted, which means it's selected. And you see the property editor, the property editor is now filled with all these attributes related to the display. So as you add widgets to the display from the widget toolbox, as you select those items, the last item selected, all those attributes will appear in the, uh, the property editor. And that particular item will show up as selected in the property inspector. Just to be sure that you're going to get these three items to appear on your designer, you hit view, select widget box, object inspector, property inspector. I also like to set these settings and preferences for editing. As you go to settings, preferences, set the appearance of dock window. You can also separate the windows if you want. Don't want to dock them if you want to separate uh, the, you know, the toolbox or the editor. Um, there's another option for setting that. If you want to adjust the fonts, you can also do that. The third thing I like to do is I like to set the grid resolution to two. That's the lowest level. You just go to settings, preferences, forms and you'll see the grid settings. Okay, so here's the first, uh, the, the first part of the toolkit, the object inspector, which is a hierarchical list of objects. On the uh, left, it'll show uh, enumeration of all the items that you drag and drop into the display. So for example, you have 18 lines here. As you add lines, it just append the line number for that particular uh, widget onto uh, this object inspector, and then it'll tell you the class type, the widget type, uh, under the uh, class um, designation. So the objects uh, are, are uh, they're assigned a number and they're defined by the type. Okay, so here's a property editor. Each widget, each widget has a set of properties and you're, they're chosen with the property editor. So you have X and Y position on the display, the height and width of the widget. And uh, so the, uh, the properties of the widget really depend upon what type of widget you have. But here, for example, uh, for the uh, channel axis widgets, you assign a channel axis name, you set the color mode, you want to put it in alarm mode. You can set a rule for visibility of the widget. You can set the minimum max range if it's uh, like a slider, for example. You can also determine the direction that it's going to move on the display. Again, depending upon whether or not, for example, it could be a slider. And the third thing, the widget box. Here's what you sl select the widgets. And they're divided into three categories. You have controllers which uh, are used to set a value to a CA put to the hardware. There's a monitor where you read the value, CA get. There are graphics, graphics widgets, circles, squares, triangles, polyline. And uh, these have channel access connection, which allows you to uh, set uh, attribute for visibility, for example, make it disappear on a calculation or an alarm. And there is a fourth widget type which doesn't have channel access and they're under display widgets. And uh, the most common of those are horizontal lines, vertical lines. Okay, so here uh, I listed most of the widgets and uh, divide them into these different categories I just explained, the graphics, monitors for CA gets, controllers for CA puts, 
The point, though, here is that all of these widgets are, have uh, comparable widgets for MEDM. They were derived from MEDM. And uh, so everything that you had in MEDM, you've got here with CAQDM widgets. Okay, and then here I, I uh, drew examples of the widgets on display. And to the left here, we have graphics. We have a, a you know, a, um, a square <laughs> text triangle, a polyline. Uh, I imported a JPEG here at the top. And uh, in the center here under the controllers, there's like a thumb wheel, a uh, slider, a uh, text entry, toggle button. The monitors on the top, there's an LED. Uh, there's a circular meter, a linear meter. Uh, there's text readback, byte readback. See, QTM uses style sheets. They're used to define the attributes of the widgets. For example, you can set the foreground color, the background color, the font size. And Anton defined his, his, uh, his custom widgets using a style sheet. They're based on the cascading style sheets. They're used with HMT, HTML. So there's a default so, uh, style sheet that, that Anton uses to load for the parent object that is the main display. So again, like I'm saying, they define the standard attributes of channel access widgets that, that, that Anton created. You can load your own from a local directory. If you want to create your own widgets, look and feel. But some of these attributes are going to be overwritten. For example, if you got uh, a, um, a toggle button, Anton has defined the font for that toggle button. You can't change it. So there, there are certain attributes you uh, can't change. Others, like for example, the background color, you do have control over. So the first thing I like to do when I get a new display is change the background. And so uh, the background of the display. So in order to do that, you have to select the style sheet for the main window. So I clicked on main window. See now here in the object, inspector main window is highlighted in dark blue. I select style sheet. And then this pops up, edit style sheet. Next step, I've uh, grabbed the definition for the background color. The next step I do is I add color. The color palette shows up. And here, um, The, the color palette has basic colors, but then you can create your own color and save it as a custom color. So there's a lot of flexibility for what color you can use on the display. Okay, so I just selected, go back here. I selected this custom color. And once I selected it and hit OK, The central widgets redefined for that color. I OK. There it is. I've changed the background color. OK, for editing, widgets are drag and drop. And uh, I put in some, you know, some um, key click options. Maybe perhaps <laughs> you could print this later if you wanted to. but. Um, Left widget to select, the object name will appear in a property editor. Right click for the edit menu functions, cut, copy, and paste. Widgets are tiled. You can send them to the back, bring them to the front. You know, with MEDM, the last widget you draw is going to be on top. Here you have the flexibility to put it on the bottom. Uh, use the arrow keys once you've selected a widget to move it from place to place. There are standard file functions, open, close, save. And there's an there's a undo, redo buffer. Every key click that you make when you're editing the display is saved. So you can back up all the way back to the beginning.
here uh, starting editing a display, what I've done here is I've selected um, a toggle button. You see it's highlighted here in blue, blue outline. The object inspector tells me which item I've selected. And then here in the property editor, I can add the channel axis properties. I can add the, the, the uh, assign a process variable name to the channel. I can set the background, the foreground, um, determine what the color mode's gonna be. Um, all the attributes that, you're for, that uh, you want to assign for channel access, you get through the property editor. Okay, here for example, I selected a channel. Now you could type it into the, to the, uh, the, to the field on the, on the property editor, but you can also launch it, launch as edit text and add the, add the PV name, hit OK, there it's assigned. Okay, here I'm going to change the background color. Well, I've changed the background color. Set it to uh, light blue, hit OK for the background, and I got a light blue toggle button. Fonts are scalable. There are two widgets, the CA label widget and the CA line edit widget. CA label widget is just for text. text. Um, the CA line editor, uh, line edit, is a text monitor readback. So an analog related to uh, uh, an AI record, for example. Font scale mode, you can set it to none or have it scaled to the height. But the default setting is width and height. And the reason why we want it to set to width and height is when you rescale out, resize the display, all the fonts will scale with it. <clears throat> um, this is uh, different from MADM in that the, the, the horizontal boundary for a text widget, um, you cannot write text beyond the limits of the boundary. You can do that with MADM. Here with CAQTM, you can't do that. So the point is, is that when you draw, when you draw a text, just uh, scale it out, pull it out, until you feel it looks good on the display. Okay, here, uh, font selection. Here's an example of setting a font. And I created a UI display with 10 different types of fonts. And uh, for example, here, the bottom font I've selected, <clears throat> uh, Verdana, right? And bold italic. And so th there, uh, there are a lot of different fonts you can use on a display. <laughs> I don't know why you'd want to change the font on the same display. Maybe perhaps you like uh, the look of a smaller font in a smaller scale. You have that flexibility with uh, CAQ. Also, you set the alignment, alignment left, alignment vertical center, align horizontal center. You have those settings here. Uh, so here's the finished project, product and execute. My 10 fonts, different font types, left justified. There they are. Right, so you adjust the height and scale to get, get them to scale out uniformly. Adjust the height till they look okay. Going back to the MEDM talk, um, we have a, a soft IOC that can run a virtual LINAC for people here visiting the lab. They want to get an understanding of what kind of work we do here, what the accelerator does. So they created this display, virtual LINAC. And uh, so you can have a person run the display and uh, make adjustments on uh, the magnets and so on. Um, but the point, though, I wanted to make is that I put this through, well, let me step back here. When you draw the graphic objects, you have a lot of control over the look and feel. And here, um, we've drawn uh, a magnet, the, the, the beam pipe, um, a coupler. And uh, if you're very 
clever. You can really make it look like uh, what's out there. You know, here they've drawn it layering the top to simulate a light source coming from above. You give it some dimension. In any case, I ran this through the, the converter, and so all the graphic objects went right through, and uh, they look great. So the point, though, is, is that um, for, for drawing graphics on uh, MEDM, we've seen what we can do. The same things, you can draw the same kind of objects with CAQDM. Okay, dy dynamic attributes. It's about change. It's about visibility, whether uh, you want to have something appear on the display or not. So you can draw, draw a box and assign a rule to it to determine whether or not it's going to appear on the display. So you can set, you can set alarm. You can set the uh, alarm value, and it'll turn green, turn yellow, turn red, depending upon the alarm level. You have control over visibility mode. If, it's, if the process variable is zero, or if it's not zero, you have capability of setting that. There's also calc mode, setting a calculation, where you can um, evaluate two process variables to make a determination whether or not something's going to appear and disappear on the display. So here I have the property editor. And there are 16 variables that you can assign. The most prominent are the top four, which are process variable names. And uh, the others, I'm not going to enumerate them, but you can set on the high operating output level of a channel Channel A, the precision value, and so on. But the ones you're really going to focus on are, in most instances, are the process variable names that you want to evaluate. So there's a place where you set the visibility. You can type in the calculation, type in the channel name. Here are some of the calc expressions. These are taken from the record reference manual. They use the same uh, calc expressions. So we have example, A is not zero, value is 12. Um, you can do a logical and, all these values are negative. Here, going back to H, the upper limit of channel A, 90% of the value of, of the upper limit of channel A. Here, um, for people who are unfamiliar with the displays, if you don't have a channel access connection, this is what you're going to see. The screen, all the values that are assigned for channel access are going to be white. This means you don't have a channel access connection. And the reasons for that, that can vary. Maybe someone turned off the IOC. Maybe, for example, you don't have a network connection. Somebody un unplugged the network plug. But that's what this means. No channel access connection. PVs are drag and drop from the display from an active running CAQDM display. Use the middle mouse button to get the PV name. Uh, here, this came from uh, the other slide. Uh, you could draw, drop it into a motif widget. Obviously, here you can't because it's cute motif, they aren't going to work together. But you can drop it into a text editor. And uh, this is, uh, yeah, this is, a, this is a good way to find out the PV name of something on the display. You, you, if you want to know what, what the PV assigned to that particular item on the display, this is a good way to get it. And it doesn't work on a Mac. Here's another way to get information about a PV on the display, PV info. And it gives more detailed information about it. Just hover the mouse over the widget, and the process variable name will pop up. Right click, get info. There's a get info icon will, will pop up on a right click. And uh, left click, and here you'll get this on the display tells you information, what's the, what's the uh, 
What's the level? What's the value of the process variable? Where is it coming from? What's the high operating range set on that, on that uh, process variable? You get a lot more information here with PV info. PV limits. Okay, so you can, you can set the limits. The, the, the designer of the display has the, has the uh, control over de defining where the limits are going to be determined from a, from a widget. And for instance, uh, for a slider, the, the drive high and dro drive low limits are acquired by setting the value to channel, or you can hard code it uh, by setting user value in uh, using the property editor. This isn't quite as robust yet as uh, what we have from ADM, and uh, you know the widgets are still uh, under development, and um, so. So all those properties from MBDM, for, for setting these values by the user on an executed display, it's not available yet. Okay, so here's, here's an example of just setting the, the PV limits, and I can set the precision limits mode channel, precision, the precision, precision values derived from the channel, or I can set it to the user. Macros, CAQDM uses macros. And just like, uh, for, for instance, if you're creating, creating a database uh, for a, a power supply system uh, on the accelerator, we have 40 sectors. So uh, there's a lot of redundancy in uh, the hardware from sector to sector. So instead of creating a, a, a unique database for that system, we just create a, a generic database with a prefix defined for the process variable name. And CAQDM, by the same token, uses this to save a lot of work in creating the displays themselves. So uh, the, the command line execute is the same as MEDM. Just type CAQDM-macro. Enter here, I've set the sector to S1A. For the wildcard, corrector H2. And re related displays, which uh, launch sub-displays, you can pass along those arguments. There's a place to do that with the property editor. Uh, so uh, after this, I'm going to give a tutorial. And in that tutorial, I've got a main display. I call it main quadruple X UI. And, um, I use a prefix for all the uh, PVs I created for the demonstration. Uh, and uh, so we use this wildcard XX. And here I just typed in uh, an example for user 00 for the tutorial. We'll just could type this at the command line to load up your prefixes for the display. Okay, CAQTM uses related displays and uh, drew the examples. Here we have them stacked on rows, stacked on column. Menu mode, here I've got three options and the uh, arrow down appears when you have more than one option. A single item is just going to be, you know, one tab there. I also uh, created a, a hidden display. I took my Atom icon, the JPEG, and put a hidden display behind it. When you click on the icon, it'll launch a display. So again, these are the same as uh, what we see with uh, MEDM. Okay, that's just talking about the menu mode. Here's a CA Thermo widget. This is similar to the MEDM bar widget. And I've, dr I've drawn most of the examples. Actually, I took my, my bar's ADL file, did a conversion on it, came right through. And uh, on the left column, on uh, the property editor, you set the label. No label, no decorations. They look the same, and that's uh, because uh, the uh, 
the, the style sheet hasn't defined an outline for no label. Um, with MEDM, you see a, a border outline on it. But here, no decorations and label look the same. There's an outline for the, uh, for the, uh, for the drive limits. I also set a direction value for determining which direction it's going to fill in from. And the fill mode is filling from center or from the side. Here's an example of a bar graph, the effect that you can get with no decorations. And I just set the background color to the same color as the square that I drew behind it. CAQTM uses strip charts just like MEDM. You can plot up the seven values. Here's an example I created with three. Um, it's uh, set to uh, seconds, 60 seconds. I set the range to 0 to 100. S uh, selected a color for each channel. And here's how I do it with the property editor. Selected the item. It says CA strip plot. Type in the channels. They're separated by a semicolon when you type in the PV names. I think I have an icon here for entering that. Yeah. Edit text. Here go the PV names. Separated by semicolons. And select the colors. In execute mode, you can set the strip plot modifications. Here I was testing it. And I noticed that the first channel, you have control over changing the uh, the y-axis determined by the user, PV 99 meter AI, set the range, I brought the range in from 0 to 100, from 10 to 90. So in my test, it doesn't, uh, doesn't make a difference if you change temp AI 1, temp AI 2, but um, I'm going to forward that information to Anton. Okay, the last thing I'm going to talk about, just going to touch on a little bit. I just talked about the strip plot, uh, but uh, the, you can also do Cartesian plots. There's a QWT package that comes along with uh, Qt. You can plot up to six curves. Um, you can plot arrays with waveform records. You can plot a scalar using a single process variable. There's also a waterfall plot. Not too much documentation, but I think people on the beam line, uh, your intuition could carry you on to, to uh, make it work. So I think that's it. Oh, yeah. The uh, questions that I can't answer, we have the documentation. I put some links here up online. Go to the uh, uh, Swiss Light Source website. There's a link to CAQTM. You can get the manual. You can get a PDF on it. Also, I put a link up to uh, the Qt project if you want to uh, find out more about Qt. So I think that's it. I think I'm done for now. Thank you. <laughs>